Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our morning meeting. Hello, welcome. Uh, come on in. Let me know where you're from and your name, and I'll give you guys a shout out. Good morning, everyone. This is Ginger, our beautiful box turtle ambassador that we're going to be hanging out with today. I also have another one of our box turtle friends to join us today. So welcome. Come on in. Let me know where you're from, and I will uh, shout out to all of you guys that are watching this morning. Good morning. Hello. Our box turtle ambassadors are very sweet. We actually have four of them. And I have two of them to meet you guys today um, that are just more active this morning. So we wanted to give these guys give these guys a hello uh, a good morning visit. Hi Katie, hello. Um, so our box turtle ambassadors are some of our oldest ambassadors here at the center. Um, they are the oldest actually, and they have been with us for many, many years. Um, some of them have even been with us since we were founded in the eighties, which is just amazing. So we were founded in 1986 and these guys, some of them were our original ambassadors, our first ambassador animals. Um, and they have been with us all that time. Um, most of them are somewhere between 35 and 40 year, 45 years old, um, depending on when they were taken from the wild or um, how long they've been in captivity, but they have been with us for a long, long time. So this is Ginger who's showing off. Hi, Ginger. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Kim. Hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. Let me know if you're, um, if you're joining us this morning, where you're from, uh, what your name is, and I will give you guys a shout out. Um, as always, there is a donation button on all of our videos, and we really, really appreciate your support. The last few videos that we've done have been so well supported, and we really, really appreciate all of that from you guys. So all of the donation go donations go right back to the care of these little friends here. Um, so ginger is an eastern box turtle. There are lots of different species of uh, subspecies of box turtle that we might encounter in um, along the eastern coast, but this is just one of them. He is older than me, Katie. Yeah, so he has been doing this for a lot longer than I have. He's a way more experienced educator than me. Um, so he is, we believe, somewhere between 35 and 45. It's really hard to age these guys. All of our box turtles came to us after they were um, either sold in a pet store or taken from the wild to be a pet. So uh, the pet trade was really um, the cause of these guys becoming unable to survive in the wild. Um, and that is something that is no longer legal in the in the state. They are not able to be, good morning Chuck, good morning. Um, they are not able to be um, sold as pets anymore in, in Maine or um, in many states. And they are actually considered very endangered in the state of Maine, um, mostly due to habitat fragmentation and the pet trade. So um, it's wonderful that we have these guys, but you're very, very unlikely to see one in the wild. There was actually a case of one reported seen in the wild up um, a little bit farther north of us in Maine, and that's incredibly rare. So um, very, very cool. Good morning, Holly in Jonesport. Hello. Good morning, Anne. Hello. Um, you guys can see he's super active. He's moving all around. He's moving his limbs all around. A lot of times kiddos will tell me that it looks like he's trying to swim. Um, he is just kind of trying to move. I have a pretty good hold on him and he's kind of like, why am I not moving right now? I should be. Um, and sometimes you'll see them actually stretch their heads backwards um, above their shell and like do all of this tucking in and then stretching back. And this is actually something that they will do when they uh, get stuck on their backs. So a lot of people ask me, what does a box turtle do when um, they're stuck on their back? How can they right themselves? Can they flip themselves back over? And the answer is yes, they can. Um, they will arch their neck all the way back and use their nose like a pivot to help flip them back over. So um, they'll arch their neck all the way back and then flip over using their nose. Um, and it's actually the same way that a horseshoe crab uh, flips over. If they get flipped onto their back, that's what their tail is for. Their spiny tail is to help flip them over and acts just like a pivot point. It's the same thing. They also, because they have this tall domed shell, will often be able to rock um, and get themselves righted, but a lot of people ask me that if he can, if he could flip himself back over, 
Good morning. Um, something that our eastern box turtles do tend to have is this beautiful coloring on their shell. So you can see Ginger has all of this beautiful ornate patterns on him. There is also a subspecies of box turtle called ornate box turtles that have this beautiful coloring as well. We do believe that he is an eastern box turtle though. Um, and what's really cool is that this is meant to uh, blend in with leaves that drop um, to the forest floor. I think it's poplar leaves, I believe, um, that drop to the forest floor in the fall and are this yellow color and form this beautiful pattern. So they do um, cam camouflage in very, very well with the, the beautiful yellow of the, um, the dead leaves on the forest floor. So that's why they have that beautiful yellow coloration. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Haley. Good morning, Olivia. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. And then as always, there is a donation button on all of our videos and we really appreciate everybody who's tuning in and supporting us. Uh, thank you so much, Will. That's so sweet. We really, really appreciate it. Um, I will um, put Ginger back over here and um, introduce you guys to the other box turtle I have with me today. Um, if you guys would like. If you have any other questions about Ginger though, please let me know. Something interesting is um, Ginger was originally thought to be a female turtle um, and was named Ginger for the beautiful coloration that he has on his shell. And it does look a lot like ginger root, you know, the different patterns. Um, but when we got him at the center, we actually realized that Ginger was a boy. Um, and we can tell that based on the color of his eyes. So if you guys can see, um, he has these brilliant red eyes, and most of the time with box turtles, that does indicate that they are a male. He also has all this beautiful orange and yellow all over his skin. That's something that usually also indicates a male box turtle. And then um, you can see the underside of his shell is curved inward towards his belly button. That is um, also an indication that he is a male uh, turtle because in the females, it's usually very, very flat. So, um, so we do suspect that he is actually a boy, not a girl. <laughs> um, I also have Lily. Good morning, um, Aria and Sarah. Hello. Um, I also have another one of our box turtles to visit you guys today. This is Lily. Lily is our adorable little uh, female box turtle. She is so, so sweet. Hello. Um, she is another subspecies of box turtle that we call a three-toed box turtle. Um, and that is simply because they have three toes. I'll show you guys on this, on this back foot. Three little toes on their back feet. We'll see if she'll show off her back feet. So if you guys can see that, she has three little toes on her back foot. And um, that is, you know, usually four in the other box turtles. So these guys are called three-toed box turtles. The subspecies of box turtles are just like um, breeds of dogs. So they're all dogs or they're all box turtles, but they just have different um, sizes and shapes and adaptations. Um, so these guys, hi. Hello. These guys are all, um, are all, hi, um, are all the same species. So they actually can hybridize. You can get um, turtles of different subspecies mating with each other and making a hybrid, um, just like we might have mutt dogs at home. These guys get, can make um, hybridized species, uh, subspecies of box turtle. Um, David, hi, dad. Hello. How do their shells get larger? That's a really good question. So a lot of People tend to um, think that turtles are born um, out of their shell or that they can remove their shell um, and that they're like hermit crabs. They can, you know, go up a size if they get bigger, but they actually can't. Their shells are a part of their skeleton and they, um, they grow from these puzzle pieces that you see here. So Lily has all of these puzzle pieces all over her body. And those are really uh, growth plates. So when she is hatched from an egg, she has a shell and her spine is actually attached on the underside of that shell um, into her body cavity. So you can see this line that runs up the center of her, her body, that is her spine. And, um, and she will grow outward from the center of all of these little puzzle pieces that you see. These are called scutes and they grow outwards and they're just like our growth plates in our bones they help to make sure that this little lady is not um 
is not constrained in her shell at all, so her shell will grow with her as she gets older. Um, and sometimes in younger turtles, um, it is harder to do this with older turtles like these guys, but sometimes in younger turtles, you can actually count the distinct growth rings. You guys can see she has some ridges on her shell. You can count the distinct growth rings on younger turtles to approximate how old they are. Uh, once they get to a certain age, and certainly once they get as old as Lily is here, she's probably around again 35 to 45 years old, um, it's really hard to estimate with those with those lines because they will wear down, they will um, they will get worn away and it's just, it becomes really hard to, um, to estimate with those, but when they're younger, you can. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. J thank you, Chuck. Their beaks are looking pretty good right now. We, um, do occasionally have to trim them if they get too long, but we also will feed them their food on a uh, slate. So, um, that helps them to like wear down their own beaks. So they do a pretty good job of keeping their beaks nice and trim. Um, Lily here does a really good job of trimming down her beak. It looks perfect. You are so perfect, but you can see she has a slightly more brown colored eye than Ginger. Um, she is more, you know, demure in coloration. She doesn't really have the bright, bright oranges and yellows that, um, that Ginger has. Hi, buddy. Yeah. Um, and box turtles are really cool because of their unique shell adaptations. So their shells are very unique within the turtle world. Um, they have this tall domed shell, which is normal for a turtle that lives on land. They are going to have a tall shell that they're able to completely tuck into. Um, and these guys are terrestrial turtles. So everybody thinks turtles live in the water and tortoises live on land. But it's actually not the case. Turtles will live near water but um, very, a lot of turtles are terrestrial, and these guys are one of them. So they are going to be living on land, and the thing that makes them really unique is this hinge that you guys can see, this line right here. On the bottom of her shell, this line is actually a hinge. So when Lily gets scared, she can actually tuck up inside of her shell and fold up this front little part of her, uh, the underside of her shell in front of her face like a little trap door. Um, the underside of our turtle shell is called the plastron, and no other species of turtle has this hinged plastron, only box turtles. So they are very, very unique. Good morning, uh, thank you so much, Maureen. That is so sweet of you to donate. Oh my goodness, thank you guys so much. Our turtles are really, really sweet. They actually just got um, a little upgrade to their house, um, their indoor. Um, enclosure. We replaced some of the wood that was in their um, indoor enclosure and that helped to kind of refresh it a little bit, but we're also really excited to get them into a new space in the new facility when that um, when the time comes. And then they also do go outside uh, during the summers into outdoor enclosures that are really, really uh, nice and it's great for them to be able to you know, go outside, experience what's going on, and uh, the temperatures and everything. These guys love to dig in the dirt, especially Lily. Every day when we go out to bring her in for the evening, we have to dig around <laughs> in the enclosure because she loves to bury herself in the dirt in her um, in her outdoor enclosure. Good job. Uh, Ginger is very much interested in coming back out and saying hello to you guys, so I'm going to get him back out. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer questions about um, our turtle friends. Hi! Good morning. He was making all of that noise in the little tub that I have them in over here. Thank you so much for donating, Dad. That's so sweet. We really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, all of our uh, box turtle and turtle ambassadors here were brought to us because they were somebody's pet um, for either, you know, a short amount of time, a long amount of time. The problem with a lot of box turtles is that when they are taken from the wild, it becomes really, really challenging to re-release them. We have to know pretty much exactly where they were taken from in order to re-release them because these guys will use the same general territory, the same area throughout their lives, and they really don't do well if they're removed from that area. The females will actually return to the same site every single year to lay their eggs. And um, this is something that they, um, they really need to be near in order to orient themselves, in order to know where to go. Um, so if somebody has taken a turtle out of the wild for maybe a year 
and they know exactly where it came from, then they can often be re-released. But if we have no idea where they came from or if that animal has been in captivity for a long, long time, like the case of these guys, um, they really can't be released. They've lost a lot of their natural instincts. And so um, we are not able to get these guys back out into the wild, but we do, um, we do love to be able to teach about about their species uh, with our beautiful ambassadors here. We're very lucky to have them because they are extremely rare in the state of Maine. They really only occur in the southern part of our state. Um, it's pretty much the northern most part of their range. So they were already kind of um, uncommon in our area. And then all of the um, development in our area has really caused a lot of ha habitat fragmentation for these guys. So they're not able to get to where they need to go without crossing roads or um, highways, things like that. So um, they are fairly rare in Maine now. Um, you can find them a little bit more um, the more south you go. So I know when we visit rehabilitators in Massachusetts, we're just floored by the fact that they have so many box turtles. We're like, where did these come from? Uh, but they um, they are pretty rare where we are in our neck of the woods. Um, they are very, very sweet. Uh, these turtles are very, were, used to be very popular um, in the pet trade until it was made illegal. And part of that is just because of their sweet nature. But um, they are actually um, very challenging to take care of. They uh, need very specific requirements for heat, for moisture levels, for humidity, for diets, um, and they can encounter a lot of problems if they are not given those proper conditions. And what happens is, is that these guys will um, not really thrive in captivity, but they also uh, live for an incredibly long time. Our box turtles can live um, upwards of a hundred years in the wild. So having a pet that long is usually not in the cards for most pet owners. Um, and you know, these guys being between 35 and 45, we'll have them for another 50 years potentially um, at the center. And you know, we'll be along that around that long, but a, an owner, a pet owner might not be prepared for that commitment. So that happens a lot with turtles. Thank you so much, Anne, for donating. That is so, so sweet. We really, we really appreciate it. That's amazing. Thank you, Anne. Uh, David. Yeah, so they actually, um, there is something to be said for low um, population density. So he's asking if it's hard for them to find a mate because there are so few of them. And that's actually, yes, uh, very possible. The thing about these guys and habitat fragmentation is it tends to um, either completely separate out individuals from each other so they can't get back to where they would normally mate for the season or it condenses individuals into smaller and smaller areas. So either one is possible, um, but that's definitely something that can contribute to their, um, their inability to kind of repopulate an area. They also are incredibly long lived like we were just talking about and that usually means that they are not able to have their own babies. They're not really sexually mature until they reach about 16, 17 years old. Um, just like humans, they don't, um, they don't have babies early. So they have to survive quite a long time in the wild before they're able to have their own young and lay their own eggs. Um, so they have to survive cars and predators and um, habitat loss and all of those things uh, for quite a long time before they're able to start repopulating the, um, you know, and helping the population. And so um, that accompanied with the fact that, you know, of the eggs that they lay, maybe like one in a nest will make it to adulthood. Um, they are very slow to reproduce. Um, so that causes a lot of problems or helps to contribute to a lot of those problems that we were talking about. Hi. They, um, that's one of the reasons why um, some species of turtles have um, jump start or head start programs that are in a lot of like nature centers and things. Um, people will find eggs and incubate them and then raise up a, a baby turtle to get it kind of over that hump, give it a head start out in the wild. But you do have to have certification for that. You can't just start doing it on your own. Um, but there are lots of um, places that uh, will you know, raise baby turtles, get them over that hump, and then get them out into the wild to increase their rate of um, likelihood that they'll make it to adulthood. Um, so we will incubate eggs and do something similar here at the center if they're brought to us. Nice job.
Good job. You're so sweet. When they go inside, these guys are going to get a little bath. They're going to go in the tub for a while. They do love to wade into water. They don't swim, but they love to wade into like shallow vernal pools or ponds. Um, so we're going to give these guys a bath when they go inside. Just let them soak in water for a while. It's really good for their skin. It's really good for their shells. Um, and especially when it's humid outside, it tends to, um, tends to suck all the moisture out of their, uh, out of their skin. So these guys are going to, um, they're going to take a tubby. Yeah. And we do have a humidifier in their indoor enclosure as well. Um, you know, we're always fiddling with the humidity for these guys because it is, it is an important consideration. Good morning, Lori in Connecticut. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is Ginger. He's one of our box turtle ambassadors from the Center for Wildlife. Uh, we were just talking about um, all of the care requirements that our box turtles need. Um, a lot of our turtle ambassadors came to us at the center because they were pets, and that's the case of our box turtle friends here. They were somebody's pet. Um, it's not legal anymore to um, own box turtles as pets in the state of Maine. Um, and a lot of times people have a hard time taking care of them because they are, they have, do have a lot of care requirements. Um, so turtles in general can be very tricky. Uh, we have two other turtles that live with us who were both pets who had some really um, terrible shell issues because of um, you know their care needs not being met so we have a painted turtle who wasn't fed the right diet and um, has kind of a shell malformation now because of that in improper diet so it can a lot can go into taking care of these guys and they are very very um, uh, sensitive to all of those things so uh, we we do a lot to make sure that we're we're taking care of these friends appropriately yeah and it can be it's a full-time job you know so we, we definitely appreciate our turtles, but uh, they are so sweet. I know, she is, he is so cute. So uh, Ginger is a Eastern box turtle. Um, you can see he has this beautiful um, pattern all over his shell that looks like ginger root. So that's how he got the name Ginger. Um, and his previous owners thought he was a uh, girl, but he's actually a boy. And we know this because he does have this beautiful ornate pattern on his shell. He has um, very red eyes. That's something that usually the boys typically have. And then he um, <clears throat> he has a curved inward underside to his shell. It curves inward like that. And usually in the females, it'll be straight. So you can see he's stretching his neck back. He's like, why am I flipped over? <laughs> um, you're doing great, buddy. I know. They just want to go on a walk. They just want to walk around. But we are stationary now. Yeah. <laughs> the computer can't go on a walk with you. Um, Lori, they are very, um, they are very happy now here at the center. They've been with us since we were founded in the eighties. Um, so these guys are actually older than I am. They are all four of our box turtle ambassadors. They're somewhere between 35 and 45 years old. They've been with us for a long time and they will live with us for a lot, lot more time. They could live to be up to a hundred years old. So these guys are very, very long lived. They are reptiles and um, as reptiles, these animals are usually more likely to, um, to live a very, very long lifespan. They are cold blooded animals. So they are not using a lot of energy in, um, you know, keeping their, their bodies going. They are, um, they are ectotherms. So they're just getting an energy from the environment. And that usually means that our reptiles live a lot longer um, than you would expect a mammal of the same size to. So these guys can live to be 100, 120 sometimes years old. Um, and if they're properly cared for in captivity, did, was that a sneeze? That was cute. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lori, for donating. That is so, so sweet. We really, really appreciate it. All of the donations that we get on our videos go directly to the care of our ambassadors and all of the patients that we have in our medical clinic. Uh, we do have some turtles with us right now. We have some turtle eggs that are incubating with us um, that hopefully will hatch and we'll be able to release those babies probably next, um, next spring. Uh, we do tend to keep uh, the turtle babies with us for a long, long time so that they have a little bit uh, more of a head start. But we will take in uh, when turtles get hit by cars and uh, have eggs that 
they could have hatched, um, we do try to uh, incubate those and get those babies raised up into the wild. And um, usually these guys will lay their eggs in dirt and then they will leave. So they don't actually don't take care of their little hatchlings at all. Their hatchlings are kind of on their own from the minute they're hatched. But um, we do we do try to keep them in like pretty stable uh, dirt conditions when they're when they're in egg form because even just the slightest amount of jostling can can harm the babies in the egg and then when they hatch we keep them in a soil uh, medium we keep them on on dirt to help build up their um, their microbiomes we uh, give them some wild dirt or some dirt from outside so they start building up the uh, resistance to uh, bacteria and fungus that's out there in the wild and then we do release them after they've had a little bit of time with us so um, we hopefully will get some viable babies I think so far we've got uh, snapping turtle eggs and painted turtle eggs incubating with us uh, we also do get Blanding's turtles here from time to time which are also endangered in the state and I have not seen um, box turtles come through uh, the center the clinic in years but um, it does it does occur sometimes very rarely there was one just found up in Maine um, somewhere close to um, close to us so hopefully hopefully their populations are doing a little bit better if somebody's finding them uh, how do they survive the winter dad wants to know <laughs> um, so these guys will actually bury themselves completely underground for the winter they'll go below the frost line They'll usually migrate um, to a low, low lind area, someplace um, that's lower in elevation for the winter. They'll dig themselves underground below the frost line, and then they will actually stay there all winter long. So they don't come up to breathe, to eat, to go to the bathroom. They don't do anything. They stay below the frost line, so they're warm enough that they're not freezing, but they're cold enough that their body is not using a lot of oxygen. It's actually using anaerobic respiration, so they don't need oxygen during that time. Um, so they can stay underground for months and months at a time. And then when it starts getting warm um, in the spring, the ground will warm up and they will start to warm up too. And they'll absorb some of that heat from the ground and then they will emerge and um, they usually will uh, mate. And then the females will go to the top of a tall of a hill or a mountain and lay their eggs. Um, and that is when we see a lot of turtles is during the springtime when the females are migrating north or um, higher up in elevations to go lay their eggs. We see them migrating, making a long distance kind of journey to where they need to be and they will use that same nest site year after year um, they've been using that nest site for hundreds of thousands of years these guys are really ancient species they've been around with us for many many years um, for millennia and these guys have been using those nest sites for that long um, and then when people you know build our houses there build roads there they still need to get to that spot um, they just now have a lot more to contend with and a lot more to that challenges their journey. So um, these guys do uh, are often seen crossing roads. They are often seen, um, you know, they're seen digging in people's backyards because um, that used to be where their nest site was and now there's a house there. We also will uh, get reports from people that turtles are kind of walking into their the side of their house. They're just kind of walking into like right up to the side of their house and then they'll bump into the wall and get confused and then turn around and then just walk right back into the wall of the house because they have this very um, elaborate GPS in their brains that's telling them exactly where they need to go. They have very good senses of direction and they know where their nest site is. Um, so if there's a house in the way all of a sudden, they're gonna still try to go along on that, on that path. Um, and so the best thing you could do in that situation is just put them on the other side of the house kind of in the line of where they were headed and they'll continue along on their journey but um, that's also what we recommend if you see turtles crossing roads is to just kind of help them across the road keep going in the direction they were headed um, don't remove them don't take them to a cool pond in your backyard or that you know of because uh, they will get totally turned around they won't know where they are um, just help them along on their journey and they will be able to um, to get to where they need to go all the quicker and all the safer. So, um, and we always, you know, want to make sure that we're being safe, that everybody's being safe when we're helping turtles cross roads. 
Um, but it is something that you can do to kind of help them to get along um, for for their mate their next nesting season. Yeah, we're gonna go take a bath. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If anyone has any other questions about turtles, I am happy to answer them. Um, Ginger and Lily are gonna go take a little soak inside in our tub. Hi. <laughs> They're so sweet. Um, these guys, because they've been with us for so many years, really are not very um, nervous about people. You can see they're not afraid. Lily kind of doesn't like to be moved, but then once she's once she's steady, she doesn't really mind people very much. And they will come out of their shells. They will um, they will hang out with us. They'll go on walks with us. So they're very sweet. But thank you guys so much for joining us today, um, and thank you all so much for donating. We really really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any other questions, and if not, we will um, sign off and get these guys into a tub, because they've got some dry skin. Yeah, they get dry skin just like people do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We will see you all tomorrow. We'll have another, um, what are you doing? You're acting all shy. We'll have another uh, ambassador for you guys tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend.